Hello, folks. Thanks for tuning in to our this month's episode for MPD Community Updates. Today we have a special guest for you. It is our new ACO, Animal Control Officer, and I'd like to introduce him to all you folks. Mark Russomano. Mark, thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to let the folks know who you are and, um, you know, what the animal control officer position is all about. Right. Um, so if you want to just tell the folks a little about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, well, my name is Mark Russomano. I'm 23 years old. I live in Bedford. Uh, I graduated from Towson University this past May uh, with a bachelor's degree in sociology. Uh, during my time as a student, I did a 120-hour internship with the Merrimack Police Department. Uh, and from there, I was hired as a part-time dispatcher following my internship, uh, and I've been working here ever since. So now I'm moved up in the ranks and have the animal control job full-time. Very good. Um, I know Mark, Mark started after your internship. I know you started as a part-time dispatcher. Um, Mark did a wonderful job. Um, everybody, you know, thought he did an outstanding job and, uh, you know, great dispatcher. And, you know, we're glad that he took the opportunity to become the new animal control officer. Uh, Want to just tell the folks why you were interested in the job? Sure. Well, my ultimate goal is to be a patrolman full time. Uh, but. I thought going from dispatch part-time to the full-time ACO job was a good opportunity to get out, uh, get to learn the town of Merrimack, get to know the residents of Merrimack, uh, and just expand my role with the department and uh, open more doors for myself. It is. It's a great opportunity. As a, you know, mass patrolman, you know, when, when the animal control officer is off, um, you know, we assume the role as animal control officer so, you know, it's great experience and, you know, when you become a full-time right. police officer, we know you you want to, exactly. um, you know, we'd love to have you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity, good experience for, you know, you to, like you said, to, you know, learn the town and, you know, see how it works and, um, you know, with all your, your background and experience, you know, it will definitely help, you know, right. no one dispatch and, you know, the animal control job and, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll work out well for you. Let's just talk about animal control. Okay. I think a lot of folks, you know, really don't understand what the responsibilities are and, you know, the role of an animal control officer. I think, you know, a lot of folks revert back to, you know, the old days as the, you know, the dog catcher position um you know I, I know you know myself um you know there's a lot more that goes into the animal control officer position than you know catching dogs right right um, you want to just tell the folks a little bit about you know the responsibilities of the aco absolutely well the main role of the aco is to enforce new hampshire state laws as well as the local merrimack town ordinances so I'm not out there chasing dogs down 24-7. Uh, there's a lot more that goes on behind it. Uh, like we have our dog registrations in town, uh, which we do at Town Hall. It's a $7.50 fee. Uh, registration expires every April 30th. Uh, and it's really important to get, get your dogs registered uh, just in case, you know, if uh, something should happen where they bite another, another dog or a person, uh, registration ensures that they've been vaccinated against rabies. Uh, and then other things, if they get lost, then we can just make a quick call to dispatch, ask for the registration number, uh, which is which will be on the tag on the collar, uh, and then we can quickly find the address and return the dog home. Whereas if there's no tag, then we have to take the dog up to Bedford to the animal control or to the animal rescue league, sorry, uh, and then they it'll take a lot more time for them to return the dog back to their home. So is there is there a fee for getting your dog out of the animal rescue league? For the reclaim fee, I believe there's a small fee. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's something between five and ten dollars. But um, after that, the animal rescue league will alert me 
that the dog was reclaimed to an owner in Merrimack. And from there, I will follow up with the dog owner and uh, a lot of times give them a warning if it's a first offense for their dog being at large. Uh, and then after that, it can be a $25 fee for a first offense and up to 100 for a second offense. So it's, it's important to keep your dogs contained in your yard uh, and it's important to also register them just to, uh, it, it's much easier for us to keep track of them that way. Now, what was the date, April? April 30th is, 30th. The, is the date for dog registrations. Okay, can they register before April 30th? You can register before and, uh, and if you don't register by then, I can promise you you'll be getting some phone calls from me afterwards to, uh, to register it even if it's a little late. Okay, so folks, we know everybody loves their animals and you know they dress them up and you know they take them everywhere um, and, and I don't advocate this some people you know drive along with their animals in the front seat um, you know personally I don't think that's a very safe way to operate your motor vehicle when right. you have a dog on your lap uh, it's not only not safe for you or other motorists but it's not safe for your animal um, you know, if you have to stop suddenly for, you know, an emergency, um, you know, you're not going to be able to control your, your dog. Right. Um, so for the little fee, it's, you know, it can help us, you know, find your dog, number one, and, right. you know, return them safely. Right. Um, you know, so please get your dogs registered. It, it's, it's. It is important. It's very and, important. Um, you know, especially with the rabies. Right. Um, you don't want to have to lose your dog and, you know, have it quarantined, you know, right. because we don't know that it has its rabies shot. Um, all right. So can you tell the folks how they can get a hold of you? Absolutely. The, well, the best way to get a hold of me would be just to call the police department. Uh, the phone number is 603-424-3774, and the animal control extension is 4. Uh, and if you have a less urgent matter, then a uh, way, way to reach me is by email, and that's mrusimano at merrimacknh.gov. And if, uh, if you have a tough time with that, it's m-r-u-s-s-o-m-a-n-n-o at merrimacknh.gov. Very good. Did everybody catch that? <laughs> <laughs> Rusimano. The full alphabet. If, if you have, you know, difficulty, just look on our website. Uh, Mark is recorded under there as the animal control officer, and all his contact information will be on our website also. So let's talk about some other issues in town regarding the animal control. Um, as everybody knows by now, we do have bears in Merrimack and they don't seem to be leaving. Yeah, I don't think they will anytime soon. No, um, I think they like Merrimack, just like all you residents like Merrimack, so we have to share. And, but there's, there's a few tips that you can do to help preserve you know, the habitat for, for bears and to keep you know, citizens safe. You wanna Give them some helpful hints on that. Absolutely. Well, the first step, if you see a bear, is to stay away at all costs. Oh, you don't go up and take pictures or no. you know try to get close. No selfies with with bears, hopefully. Uh, but a lot of times, if you see a bear in uh, in your backyard or something like that, most of the time when they come into a residential area, it's because people leave bird feeders out or other things like that that are a source of food for the bears. Uh, and now is a big time of year for them to be collecting food before they go into hibernation for the winter. So um, if, you see, if you see them around, uh, a couple tips that we have are, one, put your bird feeders away. Uh, we suggest that bird feeders be away from April 1st to December 1st. Other than that, uh, keep your trash securely stored in a bin, uh, not just bags out because bears will rip through the bags. Uh, another tip is keep your grills securely stored and clean them. Oh, so no, no leftover hamburgers on the grill or yeah, no, we hope the hot not. dog on the ground? We hope not. Uh, and then the last one would be to, to keep your pets indoors if possible. Uh, and if, if you, you do have outdoor pets, bring their food in at night to avoid having the bears come and uh, pay you a visit. 
Okay. You know, bears can they can smell food from a long ways away. Yeah. Um, so those are some good helpful hints. And you know, if you if you want to see the bears, you know, not become a nuisance, you know, please follow those those tips. Don't birds. You know, I talked to many, um, you know, bird people and, you know, New Hampshire Fish and Game. Birds do not need bird feed from, you know, April 1st to December 1st. Right. They really don't. Um, there's plenty of, you know, natural food for, for birds, right. you know, during those months. And, uh, you know, that's why it's so important, you know, not to put out the bird feeders because all you're doing is really enticing the bears to to come in exactly um you know you're not really helping you know preserve the bird species you right. know they'll survive you know during those months on their own just fine exactly um so let's let's talk about um dogs dogs are you know primarily the you know pet of choice and um pretty much you know the, the large amount of calls for the animal control is right. in some way dealing with dogs right um, you know many issues we could talk all day about you know issues with dogs um, but let, let's just talk about what kind of responsibilities for somebody who owns a dog um, you know if, if someone if, if they have gotten bitten by a dog what what should they do well if you if you get bit by a dog the first thing that you want to do is seek the proper medical attention uh, so if uh, if it's bad call us we can send an ambulance out to you uh, if you can manage getting to a hospital on your own do that seek the proper medical attention first and then worry about calling us to report it after uh, and then when we take the report we'll find out about the the owner's information of the other dog uh, we can go from there We'll talk to them, get their side of the story, and then if, uh, if it's deemed that the dog is vicious, then we'll issue a summons to the dog owner, and then they will either be required to pay a fine within 96 hours, and if they don't pay that fine within 96 hours, the case will be taken to the Merrimack District Court, uh, where the owner can seek restitution for being bitten by the dog, and the dog owner will be held liable for those damages for the bite. Now, the res what's the responsibility for the dog owner in regards to, um, you know, is there a leash law in town or? Contrary to popular belief, uh, there is no leash law in town. It's, uh, it's more of a control law. Do you have control over your dog? So you don't need physical control as, in, uh, as a leash would provide. It's more of voice control. If you tell your dog to stop and it stops, then you have not violated our control law. So uh, if, if I see someone walking their dog and they're not on a leash and, and I observe them tell their dog to stop and the dog continues running, then that would be a violation of the leash law or of the control law and I would be able at that point to you know, give them a summons for a dog at large. Okay, and so let's, let's um What happens if you've been bitten by a dog? What what should you do? When you're bitten by a dog, if a person is bitten by a dog, again, go uh, go see a doctor as soon as you can. We will do our best to see if the dog that did the bite, if, if they've been vaccinated for rabies, again, which goes back to registering the dogs uh, to make sure that they're up to date on vaccinations. Uh, and if, they, if there's no proof of it, then we have to quarantine the dog for 10 days uh, at the Animal Rescue League in Bedford. So the dog will, will be there with no contact with any other dogs, uh, very little contact with humans other than being fed and walked. Uh, and after the 10-day period is up, then they'll be ex examined for rabies. And then after that, it will be determined uh, whether or not the dog does have rabies and whether the person that got bit needs to be vaccinated. Okay, so if, if you know, you're out for a jog and some you know, somebody's dog comes out and bites you, you really should, you know, call the police and, you know, request the animal control officer, you know, to help you, you know, 
find the dog and exactly. you know don't don't go chase them down the dog that just bit you and you know try to get the information yourself you let probably, us they probably don't want to do that yeah um, you know so let us you know call and let us investigate it and uh, you know like Mark said you know seek medical attention if you know if you're in immediate need of it um, and, and we'll let you know as soon as we know whether the dog uh, has been vaccinated for rabies or not just as a patient so you know if you need to be vaccinated or not and again that's the importance of having your dogs registered so we can you know find that registration tag and you know we can find out when exactly the dog had its rabies shots and we can relay that information to the hospital and you know so exactly so people don't have to worry if you know the dog had rabies and you know um, so it is very important to register your animals um, so what measures should somebody take if they plan on you know leaving their dog out outside or Le leaving your dog in the yard uh, it's not a practice that I would recommend uh, just because of the harsh New Hampshire climate but uh, if, if you are going to do it the law requires that you leave water with your dog and that you provide your dog with shelter so shelter is anything that uh, protects the dog from direct sunlight uh, it, the dog should have the ability to stand up and turn around in the shelter uh, and the shelter must be small enough so that the dog's body heat can radiate within the shelter uh, to provide warmth for it in, uh, in the cold winter months in New Hampshire so obviously you know certain type of dogs you know can withstand you right. know colder temperatures right. you know longer than others bigger bigger dogs and dogs like huskies and german shepherds the long they'll, long haired right dogs they'll uh, they'll be able to withstand the cold uh, much longer um, and and the coat the coat helps with that and then again the shelter should be proportionate to the dog's body so that way if it's small, then it should have a smaller shelter so the body heat will radiate. And yeah. the same for larger dogs. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we just talk about the weather, but there's a lot of other factors involved, whether it's, you know, freezing rain, uh, you know, wind. Right. Wind really, you know, drops the temperature, that wind chill factor, you know. So it might be, you know, 30, 30 degrees outside or 40 degrees, but... If there's a high wind, you know, it could drop that temperature down, you know, well below freezing and right. put your dog at risk. Um, so we talked about the cold and, and harsh elements. Um, let, let's talk about it. I mean, this is always an issue, um, and you see more and more of it in the news, and it's a very severe issue, and, you know, we take it very serious when people leave their dogs in cars during the the hot summer months right can you tell the folks you know the the importance of not to leave them in a the car and the ramifications of you know leaving them in a the car right well it's uh, it's definitely a growing problem and the good thing is that more people are becoming concerned with it so when they see it they call it in immediately uh, and we can send an officer over there or myself if it's uh, during the daytime to go and uh, see if the dog is in duress, see the conditions that it's in. Uh, and a lot of times when it's, if it's 80 degrees out, it's well over 100 in the car. So we have a temperature gauge that we use when we go to those calls uh, and we can, it, it's a little laser and we can put it into the car so it can give us a, a reading of the temperature inside the car, uh, which we wouldn't be able to do with a normal thermometer. So uh, when we have that, it gives us a reading and a lot of times the temperature inside the car is significantly higher than the temperature outside the car. So if, if you're going to do that, uh, which we st strongly advise you not to do that, leave your dog with water in the car and crack the windows as much as possible uh, in order to keep the air ventilating for the dog. And, um, and yeah, again, just when you do that, the temperature inside is much hotter than the temperature outside, and a lot of people don't realize that. You know, and I've seen Mark, you know, throughout my years, um, you know, learning, learning a little bit more about, you know, dogs and, um, you know, how they, their body works. Um, they don't perspire. So, right. you know, as humans, we perspire to keep our bodies cool. 
Dogs do not perspire, so they have no way of keeping themselves, their body temperature down. Um, you know, they can drink water so they don't get dehydrated, but it doesn't stop the effect of the heat exhaustion and the internal heat damage that it that it causes. Right. Um, you know, dogs, you know, body inside, their temperature just keeps rising. So if that car is at 120 degrees, you know, you're going to cause you know, permanent injury and probably death to your, to your pet. Right. If it's left in there for any sustained period of time at that temperature, it, it can be very damaging to the dog. And, you know, so that's why, you know, I tell folks, you know, we take this seriously, um, you know, and that's the last thing we want to do is, you know, smash your window or, or you know, um, take your, take your dog out and rescue it. Right. You know, we know everybody loves their animals. But, you know, if you're going to the mall or you're going somewhere for an extended period of time, do your pet a favor and leave it at home. Right. Your dog is much happier at home, you know, out of the elements than it is why, you know, you're shopping for two hours, the dog's sitting in a hot car. Right. And, and that's a, a good point that you brought up is we, we hope that we don't have to go there and smash a window because that's something that we can do. Uh, it is within the law, and if we have to go there and rescue your dog out of a hot car by smashing the window, we're not liable for the damages there either. So, you know, even even if uh, you know. Well, and I can tell you, you know, from past experience, you know, if that's the case, and we feel you know the dog's in danger, you know, besides, you know, the the window, um, you know, we will charge the person with animal cruelty. Right. Um, there's no doubt about it. If that dog is in distress and you know, we feel that it's, you know, in danger, the owner of that dog will be charged. Right. Um, you know, it's not something we want to do, but we're obligated by law to protect animals. Right. And, you know, if somebody is irresponsible and, you know, has to take their dog in the car and leave it while they're, you know, shopping, yeah. um, you know, they will be charged. Right. Um, you know, we love animals just as much as everybody else, and we, uh, you know, we have to follow the rules and make sure that they're protected right. as well. Um, so let's talk about, you know, that's the health of a dog. Let's talk about, um, you know, another issue. Um, you know, dogs, you know, they can be nuisances as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just their nature. That's how they, you know, um, interact in this world. And, right. you know, they bark. Right. And, you know, can you tell the folks a little bit about our, you know, nuisance law? Yeah, with absolutely. Dogs? absolutely. Well, if, if a neighbor's dog is barking for any sustained period of time, uh, and that's up to the judgment of the officer uh, with, you know, how bad the barking is and how long it's barking for, or if it's during night hours and uh, and it disturbs the peace and quiet of the neighborhood, then we can go out and we can talk to the dog owner and we can issue a warning for having the dog be a nuisance uh, for you know with the barking for a sustained period of time, uh, or being a nuisance in the middle of the night waking up all the neighbors. Uh, we can go down there, uh, you know, and and we'll wake we'll wake the person up if they're not already awake to issue some paperwork. And uh, you know, for the first time, you know, most of the time we'll give a warning, but after that. Uh, it can be up to a hundred dollars if if we have to go there frequently. So that can be a pretty big dent in your pocket for having a noisy dog. And you know, Mike, that's just being a responsible dog owner. Right. Um, it's not the dog's fault. Um, you know, they they're only doing what is natural to them. Right. Um, so if you are going to own a pet, be responsible. Um, you know, that's all we can ask for and, you know, and just be a good neighbor. Nobody wants to, you know, hear their neighbor's dog barking, right. you know, while you're trying to sleep. Everybody works, you know, different shifts and some people, you know, can't sleep at night or they're sleeping during the day. Um, so it's it's not good any time, you know, for a dog to be barking for, right. you know, prolonged period of time. So... 
um, be a responsible pet owner and you know if you need any help or you know in, any questions on animal control feel, Mark feel is our new animal control officer and you know like he said feel free to give him a call and you know he'll get the information and you know any questions or you know he can answer for you um, he'll be glad to do it so Absolutely. thanks Mark for joining me on our thanks for having me on our community update and um, you know nice to people can see your face exactly and, you know, nice, nice put a to, name to it now nice to meet the citizens of Merrimack this way all right well folks that's it for our show for this month I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions ACO Mark Rusamano is here and willing to help you out. Thank you.